soil. Um, probably right off the bat what we need to do is clarify the difference between soil and dirt. Dirt is the four-letter D word in soil science or soil biology, anything having to do with real soil. Dirt is what accumulates on your hands and your clothes and your shoes so that you, when you are walking around outside on your soil and it gets on your body and you walk into your house, now you've got dirt. It was soil out there, now it's dirt in here. What happened between outside and inside? You didn't change any of the inorganic nutrients. You didn't change the organic matter. You might have changed the water content a little bit because when it's that water soaked into your clothes, you dried out the sample a bit. But what happens when you bring that soil into the house, what's dyed is the biology. So the difference between soil and dirt is just the lack of the proper sets of microorganisms to grow the plants that you want to grow. No one would go into their house and sweep up the dirt from the floor and then put that dirt into their um, potted plants or go outside and plant their flowers in that material because you're just asking for disease problems. It is the disease causing organisms that are typically going to survive in dirt. Soil is going to have all that healthy biology, the beneficial organisms. So when you really think about the definition of soil, as defined by Hans Jenny, soil is sand, silt, clay. The mineral fraction of the soil, it is the breakdown of the bedrock into the different size fractions, sand, silt, and clay. So it depends on what your bedrock is, how much clay, how much sand, how much silt you're actually going to have. But those are the mineral components of your soil. All soils, really, almost all soils, contain all the nutrients your plants require in order to grow and stay alive. There is no purpose in putting inorganic fertilizers into something that contains sand, silt, and clay because you have all the mineral nutrients in that material that your plants require. So why are we convinced that we have to put out inorganic fertilizers? Well, I put on this inorganic fertilizer and I can see my plants grow better. Well, it's because you don't have any way to get the nutrients from the sand, silt, and clay into a form that your plant can take up. What's lacking is the life. You got dirt, and that won't grow your plants well at all. You lose the life. You don't have the ability to take the nutrients that are present in your soil and convert them into a plant-available form. So soil. Sand, silt, clay. They better have some organic matter in that soil because you have to have foods to feed that life, keep them alive and active and functioning and doing their jobs. We have to then also have the organisms. And what are the organisms that you need? Well, it differs for different plants. Surprisingly enough, one soil does not fit all. I mean, everything in your life tells you that that's true. Soils people that say, well, uh, we just have to have soil with this pH and you can grow any plant you want. No, not going to be the case unless you really want to be loading the system with pesticides and inorganic fertilizers and all those things that kill the beneficial organisms in that soil. So when you think about going back in time, how did we get to the place where today... We have to use those inorganic fertilizers. We have to use the pesticides in order to grow something. Well, you got to go back in time and really figure out how we got from really good, healthy soil to a place where in all of our agricultural fields, we don't have the life. And quite often, we don't even have the organic matter in that. Well, it's dirt, isn't it? If it doesn't have the organic matter and it doesn't have the organisms, all you've got is the sand, silt, and clay, that's dirt. And you can't grow good, healthy plants in dirt. You lack the biology, you lack the food to feed those organisms. So how did we get there? When you go back in time and you look at natural ecosystems, nobody was out there pouring on inorganic fertilizers. Nobody was out there putting pesticides in order to grow the most productive ecosystems that we know of on this planet. Go to a rainforest. Plenty of moisture, good soil, Nobody's putting on inorganic fertilizers. Nobody's putting on pesticides. Measure the nutrient content in that soil. 
and it's almost not measurable. If you look at nitrate concentrations, if you look at ammonium concentrations, extremely low levels. But look at the productivity in that ecosystem. Way more plant material produced on an annual basis than any cornfield you want to talk about, than any vegetable patch, than any orchard you want to talk about. Way more plant material produced on an annual basis in natural ecosystems, healthy, old growth natural ecosystems. So how can that be possible if you're being told that you can't possibly produce the amount of yield that you want if you're not pouring on these inorganic fertilizers and these pesticides. Mother Nature does it all the time out in the real world. Maybe there's something we have to learn from looking at those natural ecosystems and asking the question is, how does Mother Nature do this versus what have we done when we've been pouring on pesticides and inorganic fertilizers? How did we get to this system? Well, go back in time in the agricultural system. And when you first come to a plot of land, typically what you're going to do is either burn all that existing vegetation or you're going to clear it and then till that vegetation into the soil. When you're tilling, typically you're going to be putting in the furrows to put in the seeds. So go back 5,000 years, 8,000 years to the beginning of agriculture that man you know, started this whole process. How many times a year did they till that soil? They only tilled once to put the seed in. If there were some weeds coming up, they sent the kids out and the, the kids had to pull the weeds and that organic matter just went down on the surface of the soil. So the crop um, grows up, they pick the crop. Um, if they were gonna farm there for another year, they just um, let all of the residue go down onto the surface of the soil and it all decomposed very rapidly within the course of a couple weeks. All of that residue material had been turned back into soil. There was no need to till. So they'd till again the next spring. So once a year tillage really doesn't damage the biology in that soil very much, but you do start to blow off your organic matter. Every time you till, you mix that carbon from the surface of the soil into the soil where the nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, magnesium, calcium, sodium, potassium, everything else is down there in the soil. The bacteria have a big party and they blow off 60% of your organic matter as CO2. So it doesn't take you know, 100 years, 200 years, doesn't take that long for the organic matter, the foods to feed the bacteria, the fungi, the protozoa, the nematodes, the microarthropods, the mycorrhizal fungi, that starts to go downhill. And now they start to put manure on those fields, or they'll take plant material from, some, from someplace else and spread that on the field. Well, if you don't compost that material, then you're asking for salt problems and you're asking for disease problems. So eventually, historically, we leave that patch of ground and, and go um, farm someplace else until you get a large enough city and there's no way to go farm someplace else. Finally, the fertility of that soil is gone and the whole civilization collapses and the human beings go someplace else. And we see that repeat over and over and over again through the, you know, the um, hundreds of uh, years, the thousands of years that uh, people have done agriculture. After a certain period of time, the land, the ability of the land to grow food is destroyed and people have to move their city someplace else. So when we come into the modern era and we're tilling the soil and we're trying to put the fertility back and we're starting to have problems, or we're starting to get diseases in the insect pests, we start to notice that if we take these toxic materials and spread them on the soil, that we can knock back the weeds, we can knock back the diseases long enough that we can get a couple more yields in. We come back from World War II and we had these munitions that were left over from World War II, wondering what to do with them. Uh, and somebody noticed that when they went and spread that on the weed field, all the plants died. And so, wow, let's sell this to farmers to kill off their weeds. Starting to put inorganic fertilizers instead of manure, let's make it concentrated forms of nitrogen. We have this new method discovered in World War II, which is why um, the Allies won World War II we could fix nitrogen from the atmosphere and make TNT instead of relying on bird guano in order to make our explosives. So we made TNT 
through a cracking process and now had the munitions to go blow everything up, come back from the war, what do you do with that TNT? Well, it's a great fertilizer. So we started spreading that out. But those inorganic fertilizers are salts. Every single one is killing biology, good beneficial organisms, destroying that life in the soil. Every application you're destroying more and more and more of that life. It's not like the first application wipes it all out. It kills a certain percentage. So the next time you kill a certain percentage more. You till, you kill another percent of the good guys. You put a pesticide out there, you kill another percentage. So it takes a few years till you're addicted to those inorganic fertilizers and the pesticides because you've destroyed the life in that soil. And you are dependent on those toxic chemicals. You're dependent on the pesticides. How do you get yourself out of that very expensive way of growing foods and a way of growing food that doesn't put the proper balance of nutrients back into the food that you're eating? So how do you put that life back into the soil? Well, you need to take organic matter and compost it. Grow up all of this set of microorganisms that you need in the soil to do proper nutrient cycling, to build soil structure to hold on to your water for you, to suppress diseases and insect pests, compete with, inhibit, and consume the disease-causing organisms and the pest organisms. So we've got to make compost. Well, what is compost? Compost is something that has been, the reputation of compost has really had a lot of damage done to it over the last 50 to 60 years. Because now you've got to turn again to history and realize what happened with this definition of compost? Compost is, by definition, the oxidative decomposition of a mix of organic matter. Oxidative means with oxygen. If there isn't oxygen, if there's not air, then it's not compost. It's going to be something else. But it's not what you want to be putting onto your plants if you haven't had a good oxygen concentration in that pile of decomposing organic matter through the whole composting operation, you lose oxygen at any time. And in 20 minutes, more or less, you're going to lose most of the beneficial organisms. They can't breathe. They can't stay alive. They either die or they'll go dormant. No different than a human being. We're aerobic organisms. How long does it take for you to die if you don't have enough oxygen? Mm, about, what, three minutes? Now, some microorganisms may be a little bit longer, but 20 minutes. So you got to be monitoring your compost pile and make sure that it stays aerobic. The easiest way to do that in a thermal compost pile is to be measuring temperature. When temperature is starting to get up 155, 160, 165, then you need to turn the pile. The organisms are growing so fast, using up that really good organic matter, they're growing so fast. They're using up oxygen faster than oxygen can diffuse into the pile. And you need to turn the pile, fluff it, get the oxygen back in there. Slow the organisms down a little bit. They'll start to regrow. You may have to turn that pile again. If the temperature reaches 160, 165, you really need to turn the pile. Shouldn't have a moisture of more than 50%. Oxygen does not move through water as rapidly as it moves through space. So that's another factor you have to be careful of has to be enough moisture for the organisms to be growing and giving you temperature. So this is, there's a lot of Goldilocks principles here. Not too little, not too much. It needs to be just right. And that's what we've got to do for our organisms in the soil is to get it just right in all of these factors of habitat to make sure the beneficial organisms grow, not the diseases, not the pests. We actually have somebody alive and functioning helping your plant grow. Cycling nutrients, feeding it right to your plant in the right place, at the right time, in the right form, so your plant is going to be totally healthy, completely unstressed, and therefore not susceptible to disease or insect pests. Let's do a quick look with a microscope.